you a free gift so you can pick it up at the next set booth after service church can we give all of our guests a huge warm city first welcome amazing well we're going to continue in our time of worship and if you're not familiar with some of the words that's okay they're going to be on the screen for you but we're going to sing a song called my confidence and it's actually an original city first worship song that the team wrote which is incredible you can give that a round of applause too look at you being so encouraging so we're going to sing the song my confidence and i love this song because i think a lot of times in our lives 
We're all looking for confidence. We're trying to find it in ourselves. We're trying to find it in our performance or maybe in stuff that we can accumulate. But so many times when we're chasing confidence and the things of this world is just fleeting, here today, gone tomorrow. And what this song reminds us is that our confidence is not in ourselves, but it's in Jesus Christ who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's faithful, He's good, He loves you, He created you on purpose and for a purpose. And so Heavenly Father, we just pause right now. We're not just showing up to do church as usual, we're here to have an encounter with the living God. And so we just focus our hearts and our attention on you. And we just thank you, God, that everything that we need is found in you. The peace, the hope, the love, the joy, it's all in you, it's all from you. So we give you our highest praise today because you are worthy of it. And in your name, amen.
song of ages to the Lamb And all who've gone before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the Lamb We're singing to Jesus today Your name is the highest Your name is the greatest Your name stands above them all All thrones and dominions All powers and positions Your name stands above them all And the angels cry Aren't you thankful for a God that we can put our confidence in today? He's unchanging. He's faithful. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
Come on, let's give him a hand clap. Let's give him praise one more time. We're talking about Jesus, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. It's worthy of it all. Amen. Well, you can go ahead and have a seat today. Thanks so much for singing with us. As you do that, tell the person next to you, it's gonna be a great day. And I'm sure many of us have heard about the devastating storms that have happened in Nebraska and parts of Iowa. Let's check out this update video from one of our partners who's helping make a difference. Hey, I just wanna let you know, Convoy of Hope is currently responding to the powerful tornadoes that hit Nebraska and Iowa. The storms leveled homes and businesses and turned so many lives upside down. But because of your church, Convoy of Hope was ready and is now responding with essential relief supplies for so many people. Thank you for your partnership as together we show so many survivors of the storms the love of Jesus. And just know that because of you, Convoy of Hope stands ready when the next round of storms hits. Thank you. Yeah, can we give that a huge round of applause? And actually, just so you know, because of your generosity, we've already been able to give to that. I know it just happened within the last couple days, but we've already been able to give to Convoy of Hope to help them boots on the ground there in Nebraska and Iowa. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But this is the time and service that we actually get to continue our worship by bringing God's tithes and our offerings. And as you prepare your gift, there's ways to give on the, on the screen behind me. If you want to give online, if you actually have a check or cash through our offering boxes in the back that you can drop that in on your way out. But as you prepare your gift, I, I wanted to share with you a story that actually came up over the Easter season. Can we give God a huge round of applause for what he did over Easter? Just amazing what he did. We never want to take that for granted. But actually a story was read uh, about the Palm Sunday story. And if you're not familiar with Palm Sunday, that's when Jesus came into town riding on a donkey and people were shouting Hosanna and throwing palms down. And that's why we call it Palm Sunday. But it actually wasn't the story that captured my attention of Jesus riding in. It was actually how he got the donkey to ride in. And I've actually never seen this before. And if you look here in the story in chapter, in Luke chapter 19, it says, these disciples went into town. See, Jesus had told them to go into town and get a donkey for him. And here was the story. It says, but as the disciples went in, they were loosening the, the colt or the donkey. The owners of it said, why are you loosening the colt? And they turned and said to the owners, the Lord has need of him. Now, what's interesting about the rest of the story is the owners said nothing else. They allowed the disciples just to take the donkey away from them. And if you look in Mark, this, their, their uh, story on there, Mark says that the donkey was actually tied to a door and in the street. So as I start reading into this, I believe that this may have been a couple and this was their mode of transportation. This would be like someone walking into your garage today and starting to take your car and you go on and say, excuse me, why are you taking my car? And they say, the Lord has need of it. And you just let them take it. That was the equivalent of what they did. And here's what I love. Jesus was the son of God. He could have called a donkey to him. It would have been the first Uber that actually would have showed up. He could have just called a donkey. But here's what he did. He chose to work with people and give them an opportunity to give of what they had. See, he didn't go, he didn't have the disciples go and knock on everyone's door. He knocked on these owner's door because he knew they had a heart of generosity. And I love that. And I want people to feel when God prompts us and says the Lord has need of it, that we are prompted to give immediately. I love their heart. This Bible doesn't say that they questioned it. They say, wait a minute, what's in it for me? No, no, no. They just let the disciples take the donkey. And here's the interesting part. Because they did that, promises were fulfilled in Scripture. See, Scripture says Jesus didn't walk into town. He rode in on a donkey. And so if they were not willing to give that, the promise would not have been fulfilled. But Jesus wanted to partner with owners. And we just saw a convoy of hope of giving to these, to these uh, devastating tornadoes that happened. And we've already given. But if that's something that the Lord is prompting you, saying the Lord has need of something that you have and you want to give to that, you can certainly do that on the app. It's under the Crisis Relief Fund. But I believe that there are so many needs. God doesn't ask every one of us to meet every need, but he prompts our heart to give to specific needs. And my cry today for myself and I hope for you is that when the Holy Spirit comes and says the Lord has need of it, that we give like these owners did immediately and without question. Let me pray for you. Father, 
Thank you so much for this story and for these examples of these unnamed owners in Scripture that were so willing to give just because you had need. And God, thank you for partnering with us to fulfill your promises. We know you're God. You can do whatever you want, but you choose to partner with us and give us an opportunity to give, and we are so grateful for that. We pray you bless every gift and every giver in here today. In Jesus' name, amen. City First Church is one church with multiple locations. Welcome everyone watching online, City First Anywhere, all the guys at God Behind Bars, and everyone in a seat at our Spring Creek and Cape Coral locations. With that being said, let's check out what's coming up. Growth Track starts every first Sunday of the month. Discover your God-given purpose and the life He created you to live. Join us online or in person. Simply visit cityfirst.church forward slash growth track. First Wednesday is May 1st. Bring someone with you for a night of extended worship, prayer, communion, and an encouraging message. City First Leadership College invites you to celebrate all that God has done in and through these amazing students this school year. The CFLC graduation ceremony is Sunday, May 5th at 6 p.m. in the City First Chapel. Congratulations, class of 2024. Mother's Day is May 12th. This special Sunday will be a celebration for all the mamas in our lives. Make sure to bring the whole family for photo ops and a special gift for every mom. Child dedication is also happening on May 12th. If you'd like to be a part of this special Sunday, visit cityfirst.church forward slash child dedication for more information and to sign up. Also, mark your calendar for the child dedication class happening May 5th during our 1130 service. For more information on next steps and events, download the City First app and follow us on social media. Finally, due to the broadcasting of this message, if you have a small child in service, please utilize the family room or mother's room designed for you to enjoy service with your child. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now we can Continue our series, In My Relationship Era, with a message from Pastor Kyle Rogers. Come on, City First. If you're excited to be alive, give Jesus a big praise this morning. Absolutely. What a joy to be hanging out with you today in City First, anywhere. If we haven't met yet, my name is Kyle, and I can't, I, I can't express enough uh, how Red Bull elated and espresso excited I am to hang out with you today, getting the call from the bullpen to be the closer here in our series, In My Relationship Era. Pastor Jer has done a phenomenal job the first two weeks of this series, and then last week with Charlotte Gamble. Come on. So good. I don't have any tennis balls to throw at you today, just so we're clear. Uh, if you're not sure what that means, go back online this week and check out last week's service. Uh, but this weekend, we're going to hop in and talk about a topic that affects every relationship, and it's called expectations. Just look at somebody next to you and say, I have expectations. Nope, that's the wrong neighbor. Come on, look at somebody else. <laughs> Tell them, I have expectations. I have expectations. Uh, if you're taking notes today, today's message is called, I can't see it yet, but I will. I can't see it yet, but I will. I brought a family photo with me that I'd love to show you. This is from Easter this year. Uh, my family and I, come on, somebody. Uh, that is my incredible wife, Danielle. This year we'll celebrate 13 years of being married together. She is an incredible professional in the marketplace in human resources. Most importantly, she is my best friend, that is for sure. Uh, that is our daughter, Savannah. She is seven in the second grade, and she's about to be the lamp vendor in her play, Aladdin, coming up very soon. And that is Kyrie. There's only two things that matter to him, football and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Uh, but that is my incredible family. Parents, you understand that photo right there took 19 tries <laughs> to get the one that I want to share with you. Come on, there's expectations for that photo. Okay, will you sit straight? Will you put your hands in front of you? Kyrie, don't be doing Spider-Man poses. Come on. Uh, all, all of these things. This, this, this photo took 19 tries, which reminds me, in most of our lives, we have a picture of how we saw things going. We have a picture of how we see our children acting. We have a picture of how we saw the relationship with our spouse unfolding. We have pictures of how we saw the engagement with our employees or, or our employer. 
We have a picture of our sibling relationships, our, our relationship with our parents. And in all of our relationships, we have a picture of how we saw things going. Dare I even say it like this, we have expectations. And oftentimes these expectations are what dictate the flow of our relationships. Having expectations, it doesn't make us bad, it, it makes us human. But today we're gonna to talk about how we communicate these expectations in healthy ways so that we can experience the best that God has for us in every relationship. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 gives a, a very clear depiction of what it looks like to have expectations, specifically vision for relationships, when it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Some of your translations say, where there is no revelation, no vision, the people cast off restraint. There's no boundaries, there's no guardrails or guidelines, and everybody just does as they please. It's absolute chaos. There's actually a sound that's correlated to the phrase perish or cast off restraint, and that sound is this. You ready to spit on your neighbor in front of you? <laughs> Count of three, let's practice that noise together. Ready, one, two, three. Yep, I just described your Monday morning right there. <laughs> hey, I thought you had, I know. <laughs> I just described spring break for some of us. What? <laughs> there's there's, there's this, this thought, if you will, that where there is no vision, where there is no communication of expectations, people around us, connected to us, they cast off restraint. Everything is just wild. Scripture points to this in particular because if we're going to experience the best in relationships, there has to be a clear vision for the relationships. The vision, here we go, is not just what I want, it's also what we are going to to accomplish together. If we're honest, in this room in City First Anywhere, one of the greatest detractors to relationships is unmet or broken expectations. I'd love to go on record though this morning and say you cannot be mad at people for them not fulfilling expectations you failed to communicate. If this is the case, then it's important for us to lean in here and go, hey, we all have expectations. We all have a vision. And some of the struggle is when the vision that I had is not the nightmare I'm living in. Now what? In, in relationships, sometimes the reason we're so hard on people for not meeting our expectation is sometimes because we haven't met our own expectations. I thought I'd be further ahead by now. I thought I'd, you fill in the blank. I thought getting married and I'd be able to change him. <laughs> Y'all quiet, I'm gonna go talk to them over here. Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought telling her I loved her would get her to stop nagging me. Okay, now y'all quiet. I'm gonna go stand here in the middle. I'm just gonna talk to city first anywhere. In relationships, we all have expectations. We have expectations. Here we go, about respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. You better find out what it means to me. I, 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 have, I have expectations about how I wanna be respected. Husbands, we have expectations about how we would like to be spoken to. Wives, you have expectations about how you would like to be appreciated for the contributions that you're making to the home. Students, you have expectations about how you'd like your parents to see you as a fully grown adult, even at 16. <laughs> Was that too close to home? Is that too close to home? We, we, we all have expectations about how we wanna be respected. We all also have expectations about communication inside of a relationship. Communication is a two-way street. It's not just what I said. It's also how I said it. Researchers tell us that 90% of communication is body language and tone. 
And anyone who's in any type of relationship will tell you, you can tell me one thing, but it means something totally different. I give you an example. Where I'm from, you can look at somebody and go, hey, you good? You, you good? And that lets them know I'm expressing care. But then you can look at somebody and say, hey, you good? <laughs> and those might be the last words before a fist comes flying over somebody's head. It's all about not just what I said, but also what? How I said it. Communication. Compromise. My definition of compromise. I'm still in therapy, so work it out with me. You ready? It should hurt me and you. Okay, I'm just going to go to the next one then. Cool. Shared values. Shared values in, in a relationship. Somebody getting ready to get married. You're, you're, you're talking through how you want to run your home. You want to talk through what the future looks like. You want to talk through when you want to buy your first house. What investment do we want? What nest egg do we want? Do we, do, do we want the 401k? Maybe you're a nonprofit world, so you're in the 403b. Well, you're, you're talking through the shared values. Can I tell you, in all of your shared values, I hope that your shared values are being shared and not kept. I hope you're talking about your beige flags and your red flags. I, I hope you're, you're expressing that is a shared value that our family not just goes to church, but we are rooted and founded in the house of God, planted, if you will. I, I, I hope these are, these are values that we're sharing. Yeah. Our shared values. Here we go. It's important that we communicate the values that we have so that we can make sure that the people we're inviting into our lives share similar values that we're willing to walk alongside of. Another, another way, another expectation, trust. Maybe it's just me and I could be a little dysfunctional, but I have trust issues. Be who you said you were. Show up the time you said you'd be there. All oh, within 15 minutes. <laughs> tr trust, 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 trust. Don't, don't. If I've got to wonder who you are on Tuesday at four o'clock compared to who you are on Sunday at 1035, come on, somebody. Because some folks, is, they'll flip on you like Batman in the Batcave. <laughs> No, no, I, 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 need, I need certain things. I have expectations so that you and I can experience what it is to trust one another. Here we go. We have expectations about appreciation. Baby, I know that one of my wife's love languages, one way I can get Danielle to wink and smile at me at the same time is to take my happy African-American self out to the grill and put a steak on and cook it medium and bring it back to the house and say, hey, baby. <laughs> I thought about you. Hey, appreciation, because one of her love languages is acts of service. One of my love languages is receiving gifts. <laughs> we'll keep moving. We'll, we'll keep moving. We'll keep moving. We have expectations about support. Here we go. Don't support me the way that you're comfortable. Support me the way that I need. Yeah. Good. I just saved somebody $10,000 in marriage counseling right there. Here we go. The friends that you have, ask them how you can support them best. Most times the answer will be, I don't know. But one of the best things you can do is just be ready to show up for your friends. Just show up. Show up. We have expectations about commitment. We have expectations about personal space. There's always someone in our offices. They don't understand personal space. And every word they use with their bad breath starts with an H. You smell it right now, don't you? Yeah. Hello. How are you? Sometimes you show up next to them in church after two cups of coffee. Hallelujah. Yeah. Your least favorite song sitting next to them is I raise a hallelujah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you like you better raise a tic-tac. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, per, 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 personal space. We have expectations. You get too close, I take a step back. You get too close again, I put a hand out and keep you back. Hello. Personal space. Here we go. Personal space, not just in moments like those, but also in moments of rest and replenishment. Moms need space. Dads need space. Students 
need space. As long as they still show up with their location on their phone so I know what space you're taking. <laughs> People need space. Scripture says all the time, Jesus would go away and pray. He needed space. And expectations on intimacy. We, we all have expectations about how things are supposed to go inside of the confines of relationships. Having expectations makes you human, but be careful to not let your expectations have you. Let's just be very direct this morning and say, did you marry her or did you marry your expectations of her? The rubber met the road for me the very first time Danielle and I talked about having kids. It did not go well. And most of the reason it did not go well is because I was very immature in how I broached the conversation. To that point, she had been a professional in the marketplace for about five years. And all my frame of reference, my past, was watching my mom be at home and be the stay-at-home mom that helped to raise three boys. Honorable and noble, and the decision that she and my father made because this is what they'd prayed through and felt was good for their home. But when Danielle and I got married, I brought that experience and that expectation into our relationship without brailing through and asking God, hey, what is your expectation for our home? So while Sister Girl and I are in Outback Steakhouse having this conversation and she is crying her eyes out because I did not land this very well. I'm like, baby, you got to dry them tears up, number one, because folks going to think I'm hitting you. <laughs> and number two, I ain't the right color for that kind of accusation. <laughs> what, what I had to grow, th grow through was realizing that God gave me a gift in Danielle. And that gift is to be opened and experienced the way that he sees, not the way that I expected we got to be careful that we don't keep ourselves more connected to our expectations, here we go, of people than we do of what God thinks about them. And oftentimes, we do this inside of relationships because we first did this with God. Are you more, more married to your expectations of God? Or are you more married to who God shows you he is? Because we, we'll shout and we'll dance. We'll celebrate, we'll post, hashtag blessed when things are going how we expect it. But is he still a good God when the vision right now feels like a nightmare? Believers and followers, we, we've signed up to follow a God. Here we go who our belief in God or our theology cannot be made flexible to our feelings. For if he's only a good God when the sun is shining and not a good God when we live in the shade, then is he ever a good God at all? But if I remember what the old church mothers used to say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I'm gonna believe this out loud. I have to be careful, we have to be careful that we are more connected to him than we are of our expectations of him. It's fun to see God as a provider, but what about when he's quiet? It's fun to see God heal, but what about when we bury the loved one? Am I making sense in this room? Having expectations makes you human, but we all have to be very careful that we are not more married to our expectations than we are to what God says is best. We, we all live in this ambiguous space, if you will, between what the vision is and the expectations are that we have, and sometimes we just haven't seen it yet. Like we said for better or for worse and then for worse showed up. And we're wondering, God, are you going to be able to get us out of for worse? We believe it, we just haven't seen it yet. Some of us prayed for those children and God blessed us with them and now you just wanna lay hands on them. 
And I don't mean in prayer. <laughs> I grew up in the 90s. It wasn't nothing to see somebody get a whooping in the ice cream aisle at the store. Right? Yeah. Somebody else understands what I'm talking about. You, 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 yep. <laughs> you can still feel that whooping right there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we. We, we, we believe that we're training children up in the way they should go and we're raising adults, but we just don't see it yet. You, you fill in the blank, but there's always a gap between when we see the vision and when we finally realize it. There's a story in Mark chapter eight that shows us what this looks like in, inside of relationships. And I, I just want to take a few moments and just pick at this story in Mark chapter eight, because I believe there's some principles that we can extract from it that are going to help us in our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Scripture says this in Mark chapter eight, starting at verse 22, when they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man out by hand and he led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, can you see anything now? And the man looked around and said, yes, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again, and his eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. And Jesus sent him, the man who was healed, away, saying, don't go back to the village on your way home. What we see here in Mark chapter 8 is that someone is brought to Jesus, and they're in between a spot where they have a expectation of what they want to see take place. But they're in the middle of that expectation being realized. And scripture says in Mark 8 and 22, when they arrived at Bethsaida, some, here we go, people brought a blind man to Jesus. Immediately, the story shows us the value of life-giving community and helpful, healthy friends that this man had kept the right people around him. What are the right people like? They don't look like the folks that let you show up to an American Idol audition and then end up on the blooper reel. <laughs> this, this man had the right people around him that said, we, we don't know how to help you, but we do know who to get you to that can help you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. thought here, the right relationships always lead us to Jesus. Yep. You, you, students, you wondering who to bring close? You, you, you wondering who to keep your life connected to? Do you act more like Jesus when you're around them? Or do you feel the pressure to have to be somebody you're not to meet their expectations? Come on, you are talking to a delivered people pleaser right now that you know what it's like to sit in a room and be someone you're not and then walk out of the room and be thoroughly disappointed with who you projected yourself to be just because you wanted someone else to accept you. Can I let you know it is not worth it. The right relationships always lead us to Jesus. Yeah. begs to ask this question here. Do the people we bring close walk us toward Jesus or do they pull us away from him? Are we closer to him? Or are we further? This man had the right friends, here we go, that not only saw his blindness, some of us may not be blind, but some of us may have blind spots. Woo-hoo! You ready? Here we go. Our mutual friend, Ryan Leak asked this question like this. He says, have you ever asked anyone around you what it's like to be on the other side of you? You, you ready? Here's, here's, here's a question to start date night with. What's it like to be in a romantic relationship with me? You want extra credit points? 
bring a notepad. You, you want double the bonus points? Don't say nothing. Yeah, yeah. Parents, you, you, you're courageous enough to have the reality check to ask your students, what, what's it like being raised by me? Because <laughs> it sounds great to say, my house, my rules. I just said it the other day, gosh, it felt so good. <laughs> right, right, right. Yep, yep. But then where, when, 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 do you, when do you lean in for a moment? Get down in their level and just go, hey, what's it like? How did you feel when I yelled the last time? How, how does it feel when I apologize or don't? Many of us aren't blind, we just have blind spots. You ready? Ask a coworker what it's like to be in the cubicle with you. Ask a coworker what it's like to show up to a Zoom call with you at 9.45. I'm not a morning person, drink more coffee, boo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because the people that we're connected to don't deserve the rest of us, they deserve the best of us. And if you notice, Jesus always gave his best. If we're going to follow his model and his example, we, we lean in to do the same. His friends brought the man to Jesus. And in Mark 8 and 23, Jesus then takes the blind man by the hand and leads him out of the village. Scenery change. Jesus. I got a question. It's how I read the Bible. So go with me this morning. You ready? The same friends that brought me to you, why are you leading me away from them? Clearly, they knew what was best for me because they got me here. And now you're leading me there? Notice that the text infers here that when Jesus leads this man away, he does not invite the friends to join in the next step. Why? Because there are just some steps that you and I will have to take in our relationship with Jesus and we're gonna have to do it alone. Just Jesus and I. Ooh, this, this is hard for an extrovert like me. This, this, this is hard for someone who likes a party. Come on, somebody. You get out there. Uh -huh, you hit the stanky leg real quick. Come on. You just... <laughs> Somebody's like, that's not good for church. I, I know. Just go with me. Just go with me. Just go with me. By myself? Mm -hmm. Practicing blind faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Jesus being the word, John 1 tells us, the word then takes this man by the hand and leads him away from where he's comfortable. Can we stop right here for a moment and remind ourselves that nothing good happens in comfort zones? The growth that God has for us in our relationships first starts in the relationship we have with him. And this is going to require us to have to leave a comfort zone. You will not become who God created you to be by always being in comfortable scenarios and circumstances. Sometimes he leads you out to where no one else is. Why? To remind you, I'm all you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This next question is for my type A folks, my planners, my people who've got plans for their plans that have plans. Can we trust who is holding our hand or do we need him to first download his whole plan? 
breathe. You'll be okay. Breathe, breathe. Because we live in a world where oftentimes we, we, we can get our plans. We can make our plans. We got our plans. But what happens when our plans plan their way out? <laughs> what happens when our plan isn't what God planned? What happens when the thing that we thought is not the thing that God said was best? Can we just trust who's holding our hand? Standing by a grave, burying a loved one as you believed that God would heal and they received their healing, but they just received it in eternity, not time and space. Can we still trust he's holding our hand? It's in this moment now that the true test of faith, if you will, the fight for faith is enacted. Because true faith is not knowing the plan first. True faith is trusting the planner. I know, here we go, the plans I have concerning you, says God. They're plans for good and not for evil. What happens when evil shows up? My plan is still in motion because my plan was always for good. I'll work through evil to get you back to good, but you gotta trust that my plan is perfect even when it doesn't make sense. And then Jesus does something and it, it, it's weird. Mark 8 and 23, then spitting on the man's eyes. That's where you lost me, Jesus. I was good with holding your hand. I was good with walking with you. I was good with coming to find you. But now, what's spit got to do with it? But notice what the man does not do. He doesn't look at Jesus and say, hey, you're doing something that I don't necessarily believe is what I would have expected. He just trusts that since I followed you this far, I might as well keep going. One of the greatest stumbling blocks to the believer and follower is when we are more tied to our expectation of what we want God to do than we are to our willingness of just letting God do what God does. When you let God do what God does, he does stuff that doesn't make sense, but in the end, it all makes sense. He spits on his eyes and he lays his hands on him and asks, can you see anything now? And the man looked around and he said, yes, I, I see people. For him to say that I see people lets you know that he's seen what? People before. Then he makes the statement, but I can't see them very clearly. That's a courageous statement to tell the healer, the deliverer, and the helper that I can see, but I, it's not meeting my expectation yet. He said, I, I see him walking, but they look like trees that are walking around. It's not 2020 yet. It's still a little off. He's honest with Jesus. Let's be real in this room. A lot of times we're honest with a lot of people before we're honest with Jesus. But if we're gonna be honest with anyone about our expectations, let's begin by first being honest with God about them. Hey God, I've been praying for my spouse and things ain't changed yet. I'm not seeing things clearly, but I will see it. I trust you. I trust you. My career is not unfolding at the trajectory that I thought it was. And I did the four years of undergrad and I got the masters and I, I got the certificates, but things, things aren't still panning out the way that I thought they were going to. I, I'm just not seeing it yet, but I'm gonna be honest with you, God, that I'm gonna bring to you, here we go, my disappointments and my victories, my pain and my progress, my triumph and my tragedy. And I'm going to be honest with you about all of them. And what did this do? It provoked Jesus now to place his hands, verse 25, on the man's eyes again, and his eyes were open. His sight was completely restored and he could see everything clearly. When he voiced his expectation, and trusted that the one who led him to that point was not going to leave him high and dry. He got to a place where Jesus answered his prayer, his cry, his need, and he saw things clearly. Can I stop right here for the sake of our relationships and just say that there are moments where we cannot see what God is doing, but it's important for us to keep voicing who we believe him to be. Because when I speak with my mouth, 
what I believe in my heart, it's a reminder to my soul that I am still leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. I've still got my hand in his and I believe that he can and I know that he will because he's done it before. I can't see it yet, but I will. I can't see my marriage put back together yet, but I will. That's somebody's testimony right there. You are standing in the gap for that spouse believing what God says he can do. You haven't seen it yet, but you will. Whether it's your children, your job, your health, your emotions, your mental health, you fill in the blanks of what it is when you voice your expectations and keep your hand in his. He makes a promise at some point. He is going to see, help you to see things clearly. Yes, he will. 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 Jesus heals. Takes a little bit of spit, but he heals. Takes some hands being laid on him, but he heals. Takes him trusting him to walk him out of the village in an uncomfortable scenario, but he heals. And then Mark 8, 26, Jesus says something to him. He, he, he sends him away saying this, don't go back to the village on your way home. Huh? Don't go back into the village on the way home. Why? Hmm. Be careful about going back to people and places that Jesus walked you away from. Yeah, yeah. It might get deep to close, but there's a name that's above all names, and that's who we're going to worship here in just a moment because there are some people that are not able, here we go, to handle you in a healthy way or in a godly way in the season that God has walked you into. Let me tell it like this. There are some people that are not equipped to be able to walk with you beyond today because they don't subscribe to the same manual that you have for your life. How can two walk together lest they be what? Agreed. If they're not following God's word, you have got to be so careful at how close you invite them into your life. It reminds me of this story, and then I'm getting out of your way this morning. This story, one of my friends had a Ford excursion, a large SUV, and he let someone borrow his car, and they thought they were doing something good by refilling the gas tank for him. What they didn't know is that the engine of the Ford Excursion requires diesel fuel, and that person filled the gas tank, you guessed it, with unleaded. <laughs> causing the engine to not be able to function properly anymore. Am I making sense in here today? And some of us have entrusted ourselves or something close to us into the hands of people who don't know how to refill and refuel us. Baby, I require diesel. I require premium. God bless you if you're on unleaded but there's just certain parts about me that have to be handled correctly in order for the relationship to function properly. And it's not my pride and it's not me sticking my chest out and putting my head up. No, it's Jesus who gave me this identity. He said, you are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. You're a peculiar people and you have been set apart for such a time as this. So this week, I want you to investigate your relationships around you and ask God to help you see who have you walked me away from that I keep trying to walk back to? Where have you brought me out of that I keep almost going back to again? This is my moment 
This is my relationship era to say that where you have brought me from and who you've brought me to is what is best for me. And so I trust you. I lean into you, the name that's above all names, the name that is higher, the name that is greater, the name that is stronger, the name that overcomes, the name that heals, the name that delivers. Do you believe that name today? If you do, would you stand to your feet this morning? Would you throw your hands in the air? Let's worship him today by declaring that his name is the highest. Come on, lift those hands and say. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. Yes, you do, Lord. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. Sing your name, your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. Jesus, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. about Jesus but this morning I want to give an opportunity for someone to say I just saw this for the first time today and I want to lean into that name CD first in a moment we're gonna pray a simple prayer commitment and all that matters is what you believe in your heart you say with your mouth and scripture says you will be saved all across this room let's pray this prayer out loud just say Jesus I need you I've tried on my own and I failed but today I hand you my life, I receive your love. I hand you my sin, I receive your forgiveness. Be Lord of my life and King of my heart today and every day to come. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, give Jesus one more praise. If you prayed that prayer to make Jesus the leader and forgiver of your life for the very first time, we want to celebrate with you best decision that you have ever right. made. And we actually want to come alongside you and help you on your journey of faith. So here's a few things that we want to encourage you with. Tell somebody about the decision you yeah. make. We're not meant to do life alone right. and we need people helping us on our faith journey. So tell somebody about that. Yep. Even if it's you getting on the app and letting us know, yep. we'd love to come alongside you. We also have a resource called New Beginnings yeah, that we'd like right. you to scan the QR code down Download that it's going to answer the question of now what you made this decision what does it look like to have a relationship with Jesus that's right in addition to our new beginnings resource we've got a thing here around here called growth track we mentioned that a little bit earlier uh, won't get into it a ton but a great opportunity for you to find out what your gifts are and how God wants to use them uh, also our prayer team uh, we gather together and pray over yep. your requests every single week so if you've got a need for prayer maybe in a relationship or physically something like that let us know about it by finding out 
click in prayer in the app and letting our team know. That's right. And every time we gather, you hear us talk about um, the generosity that we are to have as Christ followers. Right. And maybe for you, yeah. you're on your starting journey of going, what does it look like to have healthy finances and be able to give back to God? Yep. Um, right. And we have something called Generosity Rockstar that we'd love for you to be a part of. You can scan the QR code on the screen. And what that is, is reoccurring giving of $20 every month and starting that journey of giving back to God. And we'd love for you to be a part. That's right. Well, hey, thanks for watching with us today. We love you guys and we'll see you next week.